Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Nandi Keshwara said, in the meantime, Brahma and Vishnu had been standing silently on either side of the Lord, with the palms joined in reverence. Then they installed the Lord with the members of his family on a splendid seat and worshipped them with all holy things. The personal things constitute those natural things of long and short duration, such as necklaces, anklets, bracelets, coronets, earrings, sacrificial threads, upper cloth with lace border, garlands, silk cloth, chokers, rings, flowers, betel leaves, camphor, sandalwood paste, aguru, unguents, incense, lamps, a white umbrella, flans, banners, chowries, and other divine offerings whose greatness cannot be expressed or even thought of. Both of them adored the Lord with all these things worthy of the Lord and inaccessible to Pashu, the animal or individual soul identified with the body. All excellent things are worthy of offering to the Lord, O Brahmana. In order to set a precedence, the delighted Lord handed over all those articles as prasadam to the assembled attendants according to order of seniority. The bustle of those who came to receive them was too much. It was there that Brahma and Vishnu adored Shankara first. When they stood there humbly, the gratified Lord spoke smilingly, heightening their devotion. Ishwara said, Dear children, I am delighted at your worship on this holy day. Henceforth, this day will be famous as Shivaratri, the holiest of holy days, pleasing to me. He who performs the worship of my phallic emblem and the embodied image on this day will be competent to perform the task of creation and maintenance, etc., of the universe. The devotee shall observe fast, both during the day and the night on Shivaratri. He shall perfectly restrain his sense organs. He shall adore me with flowers to the extent of his strength. He shall not deceive anyone. By the worship on Shivaratri day, the devotee attains that fruit which usually accrues to one who continually worships me for a year. This is the time when the virtue of devotion to me increases like the tide in the ocean at the rise of the moon. Festivities like the installation of my idols, etc., on that day are very auspicious. The day on which I manifested myself in the form of a column of fire is the Ardra Nakshatra in the month of Mrigashirsha, November, December, O children. He who sees me on the day of Ardra star in the month of Mrigashirsha in the company of Uma and worships my phallic emblem or embodied image is dearer to me than even Guha, Kartikeya. On that auspicious day, the vision alone accords ample results. If he worships too, the result cannot be adequately described. Since I manifested myself in the form of phallic emblem in the field of battle, this place will be known as Lingasthana. O sons, this column without root or top will henceforth be diminutive in size for the sake of the vision and worship of the world. The phallic emblem confers enjoyment. It is the only means of worldly enjoyment and salvation. Viewed, touched, or meditated upon, it wards off all future births of the living beings. Since the phallic emblem rose high, resembling a mountain of fire, this place shall be famous as Arunachala, Ruddy Mountain. Many holy centers will spring up here. A residence or death in this holy place ensures liberation. The celebration of chariot festivals, the congregation of devotees, 
the presentation of ordinary as well as sacrificial gifts and offering of prayers at this place shall be millionfold efficacious. Of all my holy places, this place shall be the greatest. A mere remembrance of me at this place shall accord salvation to all souls. Hence, this place shall be greater than all other holy places, very auspicious, full of all sorts of welfare and according salvation to everyone. Worshipping me in my supreme phallic form at this place and performing the other sacred rites shall accord the five types of salvation, Salokya, Samipya, Sarupya, Sarshti, and Saruja. May all of you achieve all your cherished desires. Nandikeshwara said, Thus blessing Brahma and Vishnu, who had been made humble, the Lord resuscitated by his nectar-like power all the soldiers of the two deities that had been killed in the battle before, and spoke to them to remove their foolishness and mutual enmity. I have two forms, the manifest and the unmanifest. No one else has these two forms. Hence, all others are non-Ishwaras. Dear sons, first in the form of the column, and afterwards in this embodied form, I have expounded to you my formless Brahma nature and embodied Isha nature. These two are present only in me and not in anyone else. Hence, no one else, not even you two, can claim Ishatva, Ishwara nature. It is out of your ignorance of this fact that you were swept away by your false prestige and pride, surprising as it is. I rose up in the middle of the battlefield for quelling the same. Cast off your false pride. Fix your thought in me as your Lord. All the objects in the world are illuminated from my favor. Thus, the statement of the preceptor is the reminder and the authority on all occasions. I am telling you this secret truth of Brahman out of love. I am the supreme Brahman. My form is both manifest and unmanifest in view of my Brahman nature and Ishwaratva. O Brahma and Vishnu, I am Brahman because of Brihatva, huge size, and Brihanatva, causing to grow. O children, similarly I am Atman due to Samatva, equality, and Vyapakatva, all pervasiveness. All others are Anatman, individual souls, undoubtedly. My duty is the five activities in respect of the universe, Sarga, creation, Stiti, or maintenance, Sanghara, annihilation, Tirobhava, or removal and concealment, Anugraha, blessing, is liberation from the cycle and birth and death. Therefore, these activities devolve on me because I am Isha and not on anyone else. It is to make my Brahma nature understood that my phallic emblem rose up. To clarify my hitherto unknown Ishatva, I have manifested myself immediately in the embodied form of Isha. The Ishatva in me is to be known as the embodied form, and this symbolic column is indicative of my Brahmatva. Since it has all the characteristic features of my phallic emblem, it shall be my symbol. O sons, you shall worship it every day. The phallic symbol and the symbolized Shiva are non-different. Hence, this phallic emblem is identical with me. It brings devotees quite near to me. It is therefore worthy of worship. O oh, dear sons, if a phallic emblem is installed, though my idol is not installed, I can be considered present. The result of installing the phallic emblem is the attainment of similarity with me. If a second phallic emblem is installed, the result is union with me. The installation of the, of the phallic emblem is primary and that of the embodied idol is secondary. A temple with the embodied idol of Shiva can give no fruit if it has no phallic image. <laughs>